Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. See, you're clapping. That must mean I'm done now, right? Um, okay, this isn't big enough, so we're just going to do this. Okay. Um, yeah. No, 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 we're not blaming Bill Gates, we're blaming me. He doesn't know enough to make this decision. But, so this, this will work, I hope. Yeah. Um, so, um, I, I'm glad I'm here. I have to admit, I, I haven't um, um, given a talk to engineers in a very long time, so this will be a treat for me. Um, I'm going to talk about networks. I've been doing networks for a really long time, um, longer than some of you have been alive, I'm sure. Um, and um, I want to say a little bit about data mining um, as I get into this, but maybe I won't say that much. Maybe I'll spend more time talking about statistics. Are, are any of you out there data miners? You. Okay. Maybe I'll just talk about statistics rather than criticizing data mining. That might work better for this audience. Um, I have about 20 minutes of stuff listening on data mining, but I think I'll just do that. I won't do that. Um, so clearly, we live in a connected world, um, as you all know. Um, you all do Facebook, right? So everybody does Facebook. Everybody goes and sees this movie called The Social Network, which you know to me is just amazing. It's actually a movie called The Social Network. Um, Real network analysis, I like to trace back to um, um, about 100 years ago. Um, there were a number of sociology, psychology types that um, talked about the importance of networks, talked about the importance of social interaction. Um, the first real quantitative person um, who looked at data um, was Jacob Moreno, um, who was a psychiatrist in New York City. Um, an immigrant from, from Vienna. Um, and this is a thing we pulled off the New York Times from 1933, um, April. And as you can see, um, it's um, a little piece that was buried somewhere in the first section of the paper. Um, Moreno had given a talk. He was a psychiatrist. He had given a talk to the Medical Society of New York. and. Um, you can just read the headlines here. Emotions mapped by new geography charts seek to portray the psychological currents of human relationships. Um, he was the person who coined the phrase sociometry, um, sociometric, um, sociometric, sociogram. These were all his terms. And as you can see, like a good psychiatrist, what he was mostly interested in were you know, not the people who were really well connected in the middle of this network, but the people who were on the periphery, or as he said in his talk, many misfits revealed. Um, good psychiatrists, these are of course the people who, who keep him in business. Um, and he um, speculated that there were as many as 10 to 15 million misfits or isolated people in the country. Um, he had grand plans for network analysis. Um, 10 to 15 million, this was you know, 100 years ago, so yeah. Um, he was, and I'm going to say a, a bit more about Moreno as we get into this today. Um, he was the person who first looked at degree distribution. So for example, the number of people who have zero degrees this is the number of isolates. So in addition to looking at the people who were not connected at all, he did some very nice data work on the people who only had one tie and two ties and three ties. And three ties. Degree distributions, um, which of course were rediscovered about 15 years ago by a whole pile of physicists. Turns out that the basic idea goes back to Moreno um, almost 90 years ago now, 80, 90 years ago. Um, We'll talk a bit about Moreno's contributions to the field as I get into this today. Um, the New York Times has been great in, in publishing network stuff. 
Um, in fact, I saw a piece this week about how Google plans to, quote, break the social code, unquote. Um, and there was this picture of a network. Basically, it was a story about how Google was losing out because it doesn't have a really nice social software platform. So it's losing people because Google has no Facebook or anything like it, which then allows people to use their system. Um, but you know, they highlighted this story with a network. Um, this is from the New York Times, the Sunday Magazine, um, about seven years ago, fall 2003. Um, this is a photograph taken at a, an event at a club in Manhattan. Um, it was the part of a story in um, a special section of the Sunday Times Magazine called Style and Entertaining. And um, the woman there who is kind of in the foreground with the bleach blonde hair, um, I now know as Gwen Stefani, who is somebody who attempts to sing from time to time. Um, um, and the caption for this photo was, at a party for her new line of the sports act bags, Gwen Stefani and the host Timothy Shifter play classic sociometric roles as the other guests jockey for degree centrality. Okay? And of course my comment here, 70 years after Moreno was doing his stuff was, well, wouldn't Moreno have been pleased to see his ideas um, here in common language? In the style and entertaining section of the New York Times, the person who wrote this piece, which was really quite entertaining,
Oh, can I question? Can I check my grades? Yeah, I think you need to get on it. Which one? It doesn't matter. Is this one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah, it works.
Oh,
What's your study in school? Psychology. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How's that going? Uh, it's going, it's going okay for me. I don't really have an issue with about, about yet. You have to take a lot of biology? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of uh, physical classes and stuff like that. But why biology? I mean, psychology. Uh, interesting question. Um, honestly, ever since I was like 12 years old, mm -hmm. I've always been the person people call when they have relationship problems personal problems, just issues. I'm the one who gets that phone call. Yeah, I mean, I love helping people. You know, I, I love helping people with their problems. Yes, sir. So I'm like, well, okay, that's the case. I'm also just paid to do what I love. That's good. My friends never call me about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I think it's just me. I think like, mm -mm, y'all know the deal already. People don't always do what they know they're not supposed to do. It wouldn't be life. Mm -hmm. you, I said it wouldn't be life if you play by the rules. Exactly. Exactly. You need somebody to, somebody you can get your issues to. So, you want to become a psychologist? Mm -hmm. I would certainly like to do it and have my own practice. And uh, let people lay on the couch and talk about whatever they want to talk about. So, <laughs> your job at AMT is in. Nothing to do. Okay. That's what I want to do. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask you. Yeah, I actually kind of fell into this job. I used to, when I, when I, when I was married, um, and of course I wasn't in school at the time, I had to do what I had to do. Right. Um, but it wasn't enough, so I met this guy who owned a, who owned a business um, that was responsible for like my technology and installing cable and that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. And over the years, um, you pick up a little bit here, pick up a little bit there. You know, I started going from pulling cable to uh, working on phone systems, and then working on more elaborate phone systems, and even more elaborate phone systems. And so does that mean that you could possibly like rig your phone at the house and you don't have to pay bills? <laughs> no, I can't. I can't get around that because that's that's controlled by AT and T. I can't. I can't get around that. But, um, it's it's well, do you I get was free somebody, cable? Huh? Do you get free cable? Uh, no, no. But if I if I was someone that worked at AT and T, I could do that. But uh, working at AT, I'm responsible for making sure all the phones on this thing work. Gotcha. If you were like even more elaborate, I was like, <laughs> what it sounds like he can get around a couple of stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm working this job just because I'm good at it. It, it pays the mortgage, it, it keeps me fed. No, it's in my heart ain't there. Yeah, and that makes a difference. Yeah, it does, it really does. Mr. Bing and I were talking about that Wednesday, half his major school was English, and here, tell a video. That's what I'm saying, it's funny how life happens, man, because you, some, it, sometimes life just don't, it don't, it's a plan. Right. You know, you have to be prepared for that. You may have to do something different. Major is animal science. Yes, sir. What are you trying to do after you get to the Honestly, um, right now, I just want to graduate. Okay. Um, when I came to I want to be a vet now. Why do I know that now? Okay. But now, now I've got, I don't know, I've, I don't want to be a veterinarian. Maybe a food inspector for FDA. Not a food inspector, but an animal. It's like with the FDA. Okay. That way I can travel around the world and I can still interact with the animals. And I won't have to go to vet school because I don't want to do vet school. Okay.
to the garden for a second. Any garden in elementary. Poss possible, I don't know. I'd have to grow as a person to deal with middle schoolers. Because at middle school age, we're all a little crazy. Tempers flaring, and you're growing up, you kind of think you're grown, not quite there yet. High school, now high school's a little more laid back. At least from when I was there. They were a little more laid back. I just had a lot of mess. College? College, everybody thinks they're grown. And so it's like for a professor to tell you to do something. And you look at that professor like. But see, here's, here's the beauty of it. As a professor, and, and I, don't, I don't mean to sound negative, but it's true. As a professor, if they don't do the work, they don't do the work. I mean, that's reflection on you. So that might be in elementary school where you're possibly being looked at mm -hmm. for your classroom form, test grade, and college. That ain't it. I will teach you information. You are responsible for coming to class. I learn, and if you don't, you fail. That's not my problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you could very well be up to the happiest professor in the world, and folks be like, look at you crazy. It's like, well, okay, well, don't do it. Hey, you know. One thing I do like about professors versus uh, mm -hmm. elementary, not elementary, uh, primary education, they're not, they don't have to stick in certain guidelines where elementary, middle school, and high school, they have a curriculum that they must teach by. And like, we have to prepare you for the EOG, which I'm so glad they're looking at getting rid of, because I think standardized tests are stupid. Yeah, it's, it's always a great class. But what, you know, and, and, I, and I don't know if you knew it, of course, you know, I think the, the pressure was on the Bush administration because of all of the, all of our adjacent countries putting out students that had such high levels of mathematical and science skills mm -hmm. that we were coming in like at the bottom. But so, is this the father thing? No, or George Clinton. Okay. okay. Um, and I guess he thought that by putting in these standardized tests, we would stop us from passing students along who haven't actually met the criteria to be in the following way. And it's, it, is, it is not proven to do anything to be a nuisance. And it's not helpful. It's not helpful. Because, okay, like, my problem has always been, I perform well in class. I make the grades. Tests, tests are not my best. Yeah, tests are not my strongest. Uh, homework, I blow it out the water. And I don't know if it's performance, anxiety. Well, it, it recently just got worse, but you give me a test, I'll do... I do okay on it. It's, to me, it's not saying like, you know, it's not measuring how much you really learn. Or the fact, the mere fact that you are learning. Like, they never measure how you learn, but what you learn. And so, I really hate those things. Because I would teach teacher. We'd have tests. But I would make it, it's not all going to be like paper tests. Look, I'll give you a, I'll give you a project. On this project, Create something, I don't know, like something hands on so that we can all understand it. So you won't have to just look on the internet and look for stuff. I don't know, because I just really hate work, like book work. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a little personal pet peeve. It, it is. <laughs> it, I, I just really hate reading. Okay, who, who does that to me? One of those teachers used to always give us, like, books to read. And then from that, we'd only have to take out a few little things. And to me that just like bugs me. I didn't learn anything about it. Because if you know, you know, when I read, here I go, my loophole is how I pass this SAT. I read the first paragraph. Every paragraph following, I'll read the first sentence, the last sentence. And then I'll read like that last paragraph. And I just get the information I need. <laughs> okay. I don't just, I mean, and it's not the fact that I just can't read. It's just I don't want it. Right. I read only if, if it's a book, I'll read it. Because, hey, do not give me. Well, I'm a pretty decent writer. So, it's tell me to write something. As long as 
is interesting topic. If it's not an interesting topic, topic, I'll be at it. And I'll be at it very long. I mean, like, I remember, oh, Spanish. This lady had us write a paper, like a paper on our life or something in Spanish. Who cares what it was? So I wrote it. And she was like, your birthday's in May. You went swimming for your birthday? No. So why'd you write it? You didn't say it. Cool. I'm giving you what you asked for. So, I mean, I, I did all this stuff in my lifetime, according to the paper. She didn't. So, I, she was like, wow. I thought she would have been honest. I was like, you want the paper? I was like, you wanted X amount of paper. I gave you X amount of pages. It's finished. <laughs> Let's not do this. Oh no! <laughs> oh, okay. Where are you from? Here. What else could you do? Right. Yes, Dudley. Okay. Oh gosh, this is hot. Um, ninety-three, two. You know Richard Hayes. Um, I mean, um. Okay, now, now he's he's white skin. He's no hair. Okay. No hair. I don't know about in high school. No hair. Uh, he's stout. He married. Yeah, she was. He married Teresa. At the time, she was Thomas. Uh, let's see. Did he, he came out in '92. He came out in '90. If he came out anywhere between 293. Yeah, if he came out anywhere between 1900 and 95, I guarantee you I have him as a friend on Facebook. But he doesn't have a Facebook page. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I probably would have to see him for the moment. Yeah, he was a little bit older. 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 No. I'm garbage with faces and names. <laughs> and it's and it never works in my favor. I and so you must feel real awkward when people just walk up to you and just start talking to you because they know you. No. You like, but see that's the thing. I talk to random people whether whether I know you or not. Like so and here comes the bad part. Sometimes some people always think that I'm being like stuck up, snobbish, yeah. because I just don't remember them. Like, they think I don't take the time to remember their name or their face, and I'm like, I know I'm in, all right? So it's one girl. I remember her face, because I see her almost every single day. And she kn she knows my name. And I know, I know, okay, I know she has a, a difficult name, just like mine, because we always joke about it. But I've seen her for a long time. Like, we're going tomorrow. She's in an organization, I mean. We're going to the group tomorrow. And, and she's going to be there tomorrow. And she's going to do it like she always asks me her name. I'm like, <laughs> But she knows that you don't remember. Right. And she even took the time to remember my my middle name. Who remembers, like, who remembers my middle name when it's tougher than my first name? <laughs> Like, um, yeah. But eventually it will come. I just have to, I don't know. Maybe that's just, that's just your thing. Everybody's got a thing. So, so I don't know. They just, they'll get over it. They'll be all right. <laughs> After some time. Okay. What's the name of you? What's the name of you? What's the name of you? But sometimes I'll stop because I know, I'll be like, I know I've met them before and I'm not going to think that, like that person, so. I'm just gonna well, maybe try to that get around. Person than the one acting like they know who you are and they don't. Oh man. Mm. I don't know. 
that might make me feel some kind of way. And so yesterday, one of my friends was like, Shika, when you see, she was like, when someone asks you about yourself, I want you to tell them. I'm just jump, but you just really don't remember faces and names. That way, if they see you again, you won't be bad. I agree with that. Yeah. No, I really agree with that. Because then, there's, that leaves no speculation. They don't, they don't walk up to you thinking you remember them. You can tell right after that. I'm going to check for you and say, hey to me, I don't remember you. I don't think, I don't know if I ever seen you before, so you had to tell me who you are. But I, I, I really, I feel like, I mean, I've, lately, I've been trying to do better. Like, I'll just stare at a person and be like, um, so I do name games. Like, I remember this one girl's name. Her name's, uh, Saka. But I remember it because I call her Sawak. So, I'll say Sawak. And it's not the car. Okay. And, it's a, and I think because of the organization we're in, recently we've done a lot more activities, so we're always around one another. And it's like, my Kia. I remember my Kia because I think about the car. The Kia. And I'm like, my car, my Kia, my Kia. TiVo. Because, because of the TV. So I just remember his name. TiVo. Um, it's, 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 it's Tiva. It's Tiva. No, it's, it's crazy spelling. It's really crazy spelling. And his last name is even hard. I, I don't even know it. Like, I'm not even going to say it. He's from here, but his parents, um, Africa. Ah, okay, I see. Mm. And so it's like a French name. Okay, okay, I got you. I'm in a place, also. It's going to be, it's going to be here. Actually. When? Don't tell me the name of the week. Or do I mean? Okay, how do you're casting it? I'm casting it. Oh, you're casting it. Oh, man. Um, who's that with? Like, the, the, the woman who wrote and produced the play, her name is Bernard. She's also known as the Voiceless. I don't know if you can say that before. Um, I think it's the week. Is that what you mean? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Because my, uh, one of my play uncles is in it, uh, Darren Moore. He's mining. Yeah, I know you. Okay, okay, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. He was there. He was at rehearsal last night. Tonight. He and his wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, she was supposed to be at church. Well, her daughter was supposed to be at church for practice. Okay. I've seen, um, I've seen him do it for four times. Wow. That was really wild. And the first, you know, when he walked, oh, my. <laughs> he got up and did his thing. Oh, man. He's so smooth. Yeah, he is. He's so like. <laughs> and it's so funny because we, um, we at the church have a mommy suit, and he's over it. So, we're miming. And if we always do, the, like, we do the same move. But when you look at him, I've been looking at him like, bro. It's like, now you see everybody else. Why you gotta be the smoothest one? Just doing something a little 
extra. <laughs> My mom's like, he looks like a little mimer. <laughs> well, I think that, I think that was what threw me, because if, if you just look at him, you would never, right. never guess that that, was, that that was what he did. Yeah. And I joked with him. I'm like, you know what? You remind me of like a. I was like, oh gosh, what I found? I was like, oh, if R. Kelly mine, that would be him. He <laughs> just gives me like this smooth R. Kelly kind of vibe all the time. I'm like, okay, you just know you feel it too. <laughs> but he's the, oh yeah, he goes to our church, and that's how I know him. And when they first started going. Yeah, Coros. Like, I don't know, but he I he's so changed. Great um great change. And I love him. And that's what that's the thing I think I love the most about him. He's so laid back. Like it just be like, all right y'all, look, the guy's about to go. I've never heard him, never heard him get upset, never heard his voice even raise. I was just like, well, and I know I'm just pushing his button. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all, let's regroup and come back together. Um, I know my mom. Really? Okay. That was better than the prices they quoted me. They were like twenty, twenty-five. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And so, cause I know my mom's, um, my mom's going. And I was like, oh, love you, Mister Down. <laughs> oh, that was the number of lines. Okay. So it's the statistic.
Hmm. Yes, sir. Have a good <laughs> Kashika. And your last name? I will try my best to remember. Honestly. <laughs> you too. where you use the uh, number of stars and triangles to estimate the network. some certain constraints to estimate the relation in, uh, I, don't, I don't remember, is a family family relationship? I mean, the next example would be yeah, yeah. The, the, the Florentine families. Yeah. Uh, why yeah. you choose to restrict these properties for example? I mean, why to start to restart and train? Oh, well, because these are the basic parameters in a Markov model. So that's all? Yeah, this, this, this is all? just an example. Um, I think, yeah, I don't have more slides. Um, this is, is this the same one? This is, is it? yeah. Um, we've done more on this example. Yeah, so this is, I'm just demonstrating here, goodness of it, I didn't talk about this, but what we did here was we, in order to determine how well that model fit, we looked at other graph characteristics to see how well they match the data. But I'm just using it for illustrative purposes, that's all. It is, it is the beginnings of a Markov plot. You can do four stars and five stars and six stars too, but often you don't need to get that data. So it's a Markov nearest neighbor. Yeah. Can I ask you a question on psychology? <coughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, if all people, uh, the, the society in general, if they are aware of this social network behaviors, will that knowledge itself change the structure of the society network? 
Well, in theory, yes. Uh -huh. So yeah. it will become a complex feedback loop in future. I think so. I think I think one of the fascinating. just mentioned actually the network may change right so sure. that involves the dimension of time so yes kind of time, is, time is crucial I haven't said much about time here at all uh -huh. um, but I will point you to Tom Snyder's work um, where he um, extends these models to longitude stuff or the older stuff? Uh, I guess more recent. Um, well, we, we did, um, Carrington, Scott, and Wasserman did a, a volume um, six, seven years ago, which was an attempt to update Wasserman and Faust. So I would, I would send you there. Yeah. That's a book. Yeah, it's a Cambridge volume. Cambridge edited volume, yeah. And there have been, um, in the last year, three new network Books. There's a book by Matt Jackson, who's an economist, um, a big book. It's called Social and Economic Networks. It's actually pretty good. Um, there's a lot of economics in it, but there's a lot of good stuff, too. Um, there's Mark Newman has a new book called Networks, which I think is a little hard to read. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a hodgepodge, you know, their algorithm. It's code. Like definition. Yeah, it's a hodgepodge. No, um, and then I think the coolest thing that's come down the road um, is a book by Easley and Kleinberg called Yeah, Monday, okay. I'm thinking of Friday. Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, um, I get out of Another place. big, it's a Cambridge okay. book, too. So um, it is designed for oh, yeah. undergrads. Um, there's a lot of game theory in it, a lot of economics in it, and Easley is in it. But I think. I need to walk into a couple of buildings I'll be back. This thing is wild enough. I'll come up and do it like this. All right. All right, I'll be back soon.